Hi guys, it's time for your first assignment. The topic this week is Old West Town. You might be thinking, wait, what? Are you asking me to create a full scene? But you just show me how to transform a cube. Well, that's all you need. Just move, rotate and scale. And that's it. You have two options for a assignment, basic and advanced. For basic, I'm asking you three sketches of the townhouses and recreate them in 3D. Present a shot with all the houses in it. This is perfect for those who are just starting and want to practice just the things we learned this lesson. For a bit more advanced users, we have the advanced option. is doing five sketches of the town buildings and recreate them in 3D. Use your buildings to start a simple 3D blockout scene, put some lights, explore it, and generate three shots from it. This is for those who want to step ahead and try something more complex. Now, I'm going to show you a short version of my creative process in a few steps. The first thing I do is search for references like photos, 3D models, sketches, frames from movie or games, you can get these references from Google, Pinterest, Flickr, or any other source you like. I use Pure Ref to put all my references in just one place. Then I can start a series of sketches in Photoshop. You don't need to do complex things or waste a lot of time. I usually use my basic square brush and start with a solid silhouette. After exploring some ideas through quick sketches, I can start a basic 3D blockout in Blender. Let me show you a quick example. All I do is move, rotate and scale cubes. First, I duplicate this cube, rotate it 45 degrees and move over the first cube. Then I select both cubes and scale them in the Y axis. This is our basic shape. Now I need to cover it with planks. Create another cube and let's scale it to get this form. Put it on the side of our basic shape and duplicate it with Shift D. Then we need to just press the Shift R and this will repeat the previous action. We can select our planks and duplicate them once again. Then move them to the other side of our blockout shape. Now we need some variation. I will use my quick favorites menu and apply a random transformation action. Let's tweak the values a little bit. If you want to go slower, press shift while click and drag the values. Use the same technique to cover the blockout shape with planks. Delete the blockout object once it's done. Repeat this process with every model you create. I recorded my whole process to create this scene from scratch. So you can see me modeling everything with the same technique. You will see me using a couple other primitives aside from cubes and cylinders. No audio comments on this video, so play your favorite artist on the background. After your models are ready, let's create a simple light for presentation. First, delete any light source in the scene for a clean start. Now use Shift A and inside the light option, select Sun. To see how this is affecting our scene, we need to change the viewport shading. We have four modes available. Press Alt-C to access them. The left one is the wireframe. On the right side is the solid mode. Actually, we use this one while modeling our buildings. The bottom option is Material Preview, which uses a neutral lighting in order to check the shaders. And the top one is the Render View, where we can see our lights and shadows rendering in real time. You can change it also by clicking the circle icons on the top right corner of the viewport. Select the sunlight and rotate until you get a lighting that you like. We can tweak some values in the scene menu to get better results in our viewport. First, make sure you are using Eevee and turn on the ambient occlusion, bloom and the screen space reflections. We are pretty much done with the basic assignment. For the next level, 
we can create a layout with buildings in order to create a much more interesting scene. Add a mountain for the background, for example. To do this, we use the landscape add-on and choose a pre-made option from the presets list. Let's add some atmosphere. Go to the World tab in the Properties Editor. Look for the Volume option. Click it and choose Volume Scatter. Lower the density value to something like 0.1 and open the Color tab to move up or down the value to get different results. Use the Anisotropy value closer to 1 to focus the intensity of the atmosphere where the light is. Change the world color to get a lighter or darker general lighting. Use the strength value to control how much this color is affecting your scene. Zero will turn everything black. If you are looking for a line art rendering, use the solid mode instead and click the down arrow next to the render mode icon. Choose the flat option and you can even play with the lighting settings to get some shading. Create a camera. To use the camera, press 0 on the numpad. By default, you can change the camera position with the navigation shortcuts. If you try to zoom or pan, it will only affect the size and position of the camera view. If you try to orbit, it will take you back to the scenes view. Press numpad 0 again to go back to the camera position. Reset the position of the frame by pressing home on the keyboard. It will fit the view to the editor size. Use the transform values of the camera to move it and rotate. Or use the option camera to view in the view panel on the sidebar to actually use the navigation shortcuts to orbit pan and zoom. Press 0 again to go out of this camera view once you have a good composition. For multiple shots, just add more cameras to the scene. Match the camera position with the viewport by pressing Ctrl, Alt and Numpad 0. To switch between them, click the green camera icon next to the camera name in the outliner. Notice that the active camera has a solid black triangle on the top. Additionally, you can install the Cycle Cameras add-on included in this Week Resources folder. Go to the Assignment section in the Classroom page. Click the Resources link. Look for the Cycle Cameras zip file and download it. I suggest you to create an add-ons folder in your computer to have them all in one place. Then. In Blender, go to Preferences. In the Add-ons section, click Install. Find the Cycle Cameras zip file and click on Install Add-on. Once it's installed, turn it on. Now, every time you have multiple cameras in your scene, press Ctrl Shift Left Arrow or Ctrl Shift Right Arrow to switch between the cameras. Under the Cameras properties, adjust the focal length so you can achieve a long focal effect with higher numbers or a wide lens distortion by lowering the size. Here is a focal length size guide with the type of lenses and their uses. You can navigate the camera position in walk mode like a video game. Press shift and the grave accent and a crosshair icon will appear in the center of the screen. Use WASD shortcuts to move, W to go forward, S to go backwards, A to go left, and D to move to the right. Also, Q will move you up and E will move you down. Use the crosshair to indicate a new position, then press the spacebar and it will take you there immediately. If you have a ground plane, press tab to activate the gravity and it will use the objects as colliders. Press V to jump and have fun inside your scene. After placing your cameras in the scene, you are ready to move to Photoshop for paint over. Hide your overlays and gizmos and just take a screenshot using print screen on the keyboard.
Press Ctrl V in Photoshop and continue painting your scene with your brushes. We will make a higher resolution rendering process later in the course. For now, let's keep it simple. Use Collection to keep your scene organized. Collections are similar to folders in Photoshop. To create a new collection, select the objects you want to group and press M in the viewport. This will display a menu showing you the already existing collections in the scene. Click New Collection and then type the name. In this case, I will use Church and then hit Enter. Now, in the outliner, all the objects previously selected are inside a new collection called Church. If you want to move more objects inside this new collection, select them, press M and choose a collection called Church. Or just click and drag the object in the outliner. There is always an active collection, where all the new objects will be placed inside. Click the collection icon of the one you want to work with. You can place collections inside the collections too. Toggle the visibility on and off of the entire collection by clicking the eye icon in the outliner. This will hide the objects inside, or do it individually, either by clicking the eye icon or by pressing H in the viewport while the object is selected. Once you are happy with the placement of multiple objects that create a building together, join those meshes under one object by select them and pressing Ctrl J. You might want to change the object's name. Double click the object in the outliner and type the new name, or press F2 to change the name of the object selected in the viewport or in the outliner. This apply for collections too, but only in the outliner. Blender uses meters as the default unit scale. Every square grid represents one meter. My recommendation is to keep everything as real scale as possible, because all default settings of Blender were set for real scale values. If your scene is too big, or too small, you will have to tweak multiple settings in order to get good results. This applies to lights, physics, and render settings. If you want to check the dimension of your objects, select it and go to the item tab in the sidebar. Below the scale, there is a section called dimensions that uses the local scale orientation of the object to measure it in meters.